Good morning, church. Please stand as able and join me in the call to worship. Come to the mountain of God. No matter how steep the climb. Amen. Good morning. May the peace, mercy, grace, and love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, be with you today and every day. On behalf of our pastor, Amija Cho, I welcome you to Oxen Hill United Methodist Church. We are excited to worship together and share God's love today. Oxen Hill United Methodist Church is a multicultural, multi-ethnic, intergenerational congregation that welcomes all whose Christian journey has led them here today. Everyone is welcome at Oxen Hill, and we're glad that we can worship together this morning. Do we have any visitors with us today? Okay, well, I'll introduce our pastor in, in just a second. Um, we can welcome you as well. Our pastor, Mija Cho, is currently in the UK working on her doctoral studies. We are blessed and excited to welcome uh, Reverend Insuk Huang. Uh, to join us uh, during uh, Pastor Cho's absence. Reverend Huang served 30 years in active ministry of United Methodist churches, including serving as district superintendent of Illinois Great uh, River Conference. Her passion was making disciples of Jesus Christ through small groups, the intercultural competency training, and the Academy for Spiritual Formation. After she retired, she has been involved in her surrounding community such as the, the Race Unity Group, the Homeless Shelter Ministry, Peace and Justice Monthly Vigil, and the Five-Day Academy for Spiritual Formation. She and her husband enjoy spending time with their four grandchildren. Uh, uh, Reverend Huang has always loved studying the Bible and serving the Lord, and we welcome her and her husband, who's also a minister. Thank you. Let us pray opening prayer together. God of ages past and days yet to come, journey with us today journey with us all our days, whether on treacherous paths or beside still waters. Guide our steps to find a solid ground that we may know the firm foundation of your constant presence. Open our minds to the blessings and miracles we encounter along the way. In your holy name we pray, amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer in native tongues. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stand to your feet and join in in singing, Victory is Mine. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, yes. Victory. morning church happy 4th of July um, the scripture lesson from today is found from Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 to 14 I'm reading from the new international version Abraham tested sometime later God tested Abraham he said to him Abraham here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. 
Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an, alt an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld me from your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its thorns, but caught by its horns, I'm sorry. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Word of God to the people of God. Good morning, church. Today we're going to celebrate, celebrating, and celebration, examining those words. We're doing an age check again today, as you commonly hear me say about age, because I'm getting old too, and I talk about things that I can relate to. Well, who in here remembers Art Linkletter? Okay. Art link letter. George, you have a smile on your face. Okay. Well, Art link letter for a while had a show on, and the name of that show was Kids Say the Darndest Things. Okay. Art would have these little kids on tiny little chairs elevated to his eye level, and he would go around and ask them questions. And they said some pretty strange pretty funny, and sometimes things that the parents didn't want to hear. <laughs> well, one day he asked them, what are we celebrating on the 4th of July? And why do we celebrate? Well, you have to think of these little kids sitting there on these little chairs and the age of which that show was on. They had their little bow ties on, they had their little shorts on, they had their um, little striped suits on and the girls with pigtails and ponytails and not being able to sit still and, and just looking for an out because they weren't very comfortable. Well, when he looked at them and asked them that question, one little boy said, I know, I know. It's the day that fireworks were invented. Art just went on, you know, and of course, he sometimes showed that impish little face too when the kids made these comments. Well, so he went to the little girl and he asked him the same question. What are we celebrating on the 4th of July? And why do we celebrate? Well, the little girl said, my mom goes to her closet and she takes out her red, white, blue clothes and that's what she associated it with. Well, Independence Day or the 4th of July is commemorating the Declaration of Independence, establishing the United States of America. Now, there is a misconception among people, Christians too, 
that God does not want us to celebrate. And I want to read a comment that I heard about that. God encourages heartfelt celebration. When Josiah rediscovered the Passover in the Book of the Covenant, he ordered everyone to observe the ceremonies exactly as described. This Passover celebration was to have been a yearly holiday, celebrating in remembrance of the entire nation's deliverance from slavery in Egypt, as in Exodus 12. But it had not been kept for many years. It is a common misconception that God is against celebrating, wanting to take all the fun out of life. In reality, God wants us to celebrate, and he wants us to celebrate deeply, fully, and understandingly. Now, God wants to give us life in its fullness. That's from John 10, 10. And those who love him have the most to celebrate. Remember that comment. Those who love the Lord have the most to celebrate. Now, true worship includes celebration also. And celebration is a way of giving. So, as Christians who love the Lord, we need to love him by celebrating in celebration and know that he does want us to have fun in life and celebrate. Amen. Good morning, church. You may stand if you're able. I will be reading from Galatians 5, verses 1 through 6, and verses 13 through 15 from the NIV translation. Freedom in Christ. It is for freedom that Christ set us free, has set us free. Stand firm. Then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Life by the Spirit, verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, Watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Good morning. Thank you so much for inviting me to worship with you and uh, sharing God's message with you. 
Um, my message is based on Episcopal uh, lesson, not uh, the Old Testament. I think the Old Testament scripture is uh, based on a, a church lectionary reading. So um, it's uh, not related with my message. I want to make sure, even though all the scriptures are related with one another, but I use um, Galatians chapter 5. As Cheryl uh, shared, this week our country will celebrate one of the great national festivals. It's the day when we celebrate the freedom of our country. Freedom is a precious gift that we often take for granted. Since many of us have never lost national freedom, we don't quite appreciate it as we should. As we celebrate Independence Day, we need to be reminded that freedom is a gift because many people have paid for it at a high price. A few days ago, um, my friend uh, took us, um, my husband and me, um, to visit Fort Washington Park. We saw the old historical fort walls, and I saw also the old buildings and uh, the pictures of soldiers. I sensed that many people, real people, sacrificed their lives to keep the freedom of our country. As a symbol of the American dream, the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor lifts up its torch to welcome distressed people from everywhere to this land of freedom and opportunity. As we celebrate the national freedom, we need to re-examine uh, re the meaning of freedom in the light of God's word. First of all, when we think about freedom, we think of freedom from. Freedom from something or someone who oppresses or restricts us. That's true that we find the sense of freedom when we are free from oppressive life situations, outward condition and the inward condition. That's how our country began. Our ancestors came from Europe first and then from many other countries to find the political freedom, religious freedom, economic prosperity. People are still coming from all over the world, seeking freedom from their oppressive life situations. In the Bible, we find great freedom story. Israelites had to leave the slavery in Egypt to enter the promised land and to be God's people. The story of Exodus is a metaphor of the life of God's people. Spiritually, Jesus set us free from our own Egypt, the slavery to sin and death. In order to be free, we have to leave behind the life of a bondage of a bondage to sin, the life of oppression, and the old life without Jesus Christ. D. L. Moody told a story about two drunken men who 
found their way to the dock where their boat was tied. The two men wanted to return home, so they got in the boat and began to row. Though they rowed hard all night, they didn't reach the other side of the bay. When the gray dawn of the morning broke, they were in exactly the same spot from which they started. They just forgot to loosen the mooring line and raise the anchor. Mr. Moody used this story as an analogy of the way in which many people fail in their striving for new life because they are still tied to their old life. Cut the cord, cut the cord, Mr. Moody would cry out. In fact, we didn't have the power or ability to cut the cord. Only Jesus Christ had the power. When he died on the cross and rose from dark tomb, he broke off the strong cord which had bound all people to the power of death and destruction. We are set free from the power of death and darkness through Jesus Christ. Our freedom is a gift from God through Jesus Christ. It's beyond our work and our ability. It's already given to us. Freedom is God's grace. That's what grace means. It's a gift. We are set free for a great adventure of life. However, we often find ourselves in the bound to something that prevents us from living the life that Christ wants us to live. In our New Testament reading this morning, we find the early Christians in Galatia who found a new life and great freedom in Jesus Christ because of their faith. They were the Gentiles who accepted Jesus Christ as their savior under the influence of Apostle Paul. But after Paul left the church, he heard that they got into trouble because some Jewish Christians came to them and required them to be circumcised in order to be accepted fully. The Jewish Christians tried to keep their old traditional law and to bind the Gentile Christians to their old law. So Paul wrote a letter to convince them not to be circumcised. That's the old law, which was nothing to do with salvation. They were set free by Jesus Christ through God's grace. We can see that the Jewish Christians received the good news yet they were still bound to the old law. They were still attached to their old tradition and custom like a circumcision that was nothing to do with God's salvation through Jesus Christ. Only by faith in Jesus Christ, we are set free. Even though we say we believe in Jesus Christ, we also have a tendency to live in the old way. We have to be detached from the old life that confines us and oppresses us. It could be 
an old destructive lifestyle, abusive relationships, self-centered life, old habits or old way of thinking, irrelevant tradition, as well as some resentment and hate and anger. We have to let go of them. We have to be out of an Egyptian slavery in order to live a Christian life freely and fully. I am not saying that all our traditions are bad. Our traditions have shaped us as who we are now. It's important to understand what our traditions and customs are as a church. However, we also need to understand what's happening in our current reality and how to be relevant to the need of our contemporary world. Someone says, the world is hungry for God while the church is grieving over the past. We might be like the Jewish Christians who insisted on circumcision to the Gentile Christians. We also have a tendency to use Christian teaching to exclude other people or to put judgment on others, even using Christian teaching. Secondly, there is a common misconception about the nature of a freedom. We often think that freedom is we do whatever we want to do, whoever we want to be, and whenever we please. Trouble Troubled teenagers are tempted to run away from their homes, wanting to be free. This is the kind of freedom that the prodigal son in Jesus' parable craved while at his home. But what happened? When the father gave him such freedom he wanted, his money gone, his friends gone, his reputation gone, kneeling at the trough, trying to snatch food before a pig got it. What a sad picture of freedom it is. The same tragedy has happened to many people in our days. It's when we can do as we please that our troubles begin. It teaches us that we are free in our relationship with our loving God. We are free in our relationships with Jesus Christ and the other caring people. Let's go back to the story of the boat I shared. The first step is to detach the boat from the deck in order to go to the other side of the bay. But as soon as the boat is off from the deck, it's facing the unexpected flow of water water and the wind, sometimes a strong life-threatening storms. Without a compass, it's easy to be lost. Just the tossing by the water and the wind. Living a loose life is not freedom. Free from God and Jesus Christ means that we are free to launch out on the ocean of life without a compass or a chart or a captain. Jesus Christ is the compass for the voyage of our lives. We are free only 
in the relationship with Jesus Christ, who guides us to attain the goal of life, to achieve the purpose of, for which we are created. As a bird is free in the air, a fish free is free only in the water, we, a person, is free in Jesus Christ. When we are in the relationship with Jesus Christ, we truly find who we are. We truly find the gift of freedom. We are set free from the old self-centered life to live in the glorious liberty as the children of God. Thirdly, we know another nature of freedom. Freedom is not simply absence of oppression and constraint. Freedom is not simply being detached from cons constraint situations. Freedom is living in the relationship with Jesus Christ, whose spirit empowers us to fulfill God's will. God's the will is fulfilled when we use our freedom to love and serve God and others. Apostle Paul says, For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love becomes slaves to one another. It indicates that freedom is a privilege and a gift, but it also has responsibility and accountability. True freedom depends upon how we use it. If we use it for ourselves, selfish reasons, we realize soon that we are not truly free. It reminds of the saying of President Abraham Lincoln, he who is not concerned with the freedom for others will not long enjoy it himself. We are free to love others as Jesus Christ loves them. We are free to serve others with the love of Jesus Christ. While freedom is a wonderful gift, it carries responsibility along with it. We are called to live out our freedom by loving our neighbors not only as ourselves, but, as, but also as Jesus Christ. That's not out of the sense of obligation, but out of the joyful calling. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, everyone can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. That's right. Have you seen such a person who lives freely serving others? Anybody can come up into your mind? I do. Recently, I have been involved in cooking meals for homeless people in Carbondale, Illinois, my hometown. Several churches formed several teams of people who are willing to cook. 
One person who is a certified food manager comes three times a week to assist other groups and to wash dirty pots and pans. Her name is Connie. I can see her aging and frail body, but her face shines with love and free spirit. She is not paid. She doesn't have to work so hard, but she chooses freely to serve other people, the least of the people who can't pay anything back. Her humble servanthood promotes freedom in the community. As we celebrate the great gift of freedom this week, we need to re-examine and review whether there are suffering people under oppression, injustice, prejudice, poverty, and fear. We need to face honestly what causes such suffering and what our role is to remove systemic oppression as a church. We as a people of Jesus Christ are called to break down such an oppressive system and to create a better world in which everyone finds dignity, acceptance, liberty, and justice. Two months ago, my husband and I had a chance to visit the Statue of Liberty, and I learned new information about it, probably you know already. I always thought that the Lady of Liberty was standing tall and still, but actually she is walking. Her right foot is lifted. Around her feet are broken chains, chains symbolizing liberation. It gives me a new insight. Being a country of liberty and justice for all is not complete yet. It's progressing, a long way to go. One step forward and two step backward sometimes. The vision of our country is liberty and justice for all beyond ethnic background, religion, economic class, gender, and sexual orientation. This country has been established with the belief all people are created in God's image. So all people are equal and included. We still have a long way to go to achieve that goal depending upon us. Our churches who see such a vision have a significant work to do. I would like to close with some questions for your reflection this week. It's your homework. In what ways do you need to be detached from oppressive life situations? In what ways can you deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ to live your life freely and fully? In what ways do you use your freedom to care for others, especially those who are in suffering, poverty, and oppression? God's sufficient grace upon you. Amen.
Christ, Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who honestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an 
ever-flowing stream. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him and sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night of which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the, his disciples and said, take, eat this, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen, Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these elements, bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his, his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Because there is a one Lord, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one law, the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Our communion table is an open communion. That means everyone is invited and included. So with a joyful and thankful heart, come to God's feast. Let us pray together Thanksgiving prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand together and sing Amazing Grace. Amazing. 
Jesus, we have 
Let us pray. Gracious loving God, the source of all the good gifts, we thank you for this privilege to bring our gifts and our offerings before you. We bring this as an expression of our gratefulness and our love for you and the commitment to your mission and the ministries. So, O oh Lord, bless our gifts and multiply them and use them as your instrument to transform people's lives and our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountain man. Mission moments for this week. Uh, we have, of course, on kids and adults Sunday school. Uh, if you want to invite your children, grandchildren, uh, nieces, nephews, cousins, neighbors, please bring them to the children's Sunday school and dial into the adult Sunday school. It's on Zoom and in the library. Uh, Bible study every Wednesday. We're doing discipleship essentials. Um, please uh, zoom in and join us. Uh, the dance class every Thursday uh, for exercise. Uh, prayer vine gathering, first and third Thursdays. Uh, Stephen Ministry is the second Thursdays. Uh, coffee and Connection will be July 30th. Uh, don't forget our bread ministry. We need the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Please come and join. Uh, call Valerie and she'll uh, find something for you to do if you can't make it on Thursdays. Um, there's always work to be done. And the VIP gathering uh, will resume in August. Um, please, you know, there was a story of a church that when you left the parking lot, it said that you're now entering the mission field. 
So there's lots of missions for us to take care of, even if it's just being kind to someone, um, being uh, thankful, or sharing God's love with anyone you see. There's a mission for you. I'd also like to invite everybody to come downstairs after the service for coffee hour and to welcome our uh, guest uh, pastor this month and her husband. Thank you. Shall I stand for blessing? Someone, some, one story tells someone was very late uh, to worship service. So she said, our service uh, is over. Uh, but the pastor says, no, service just begins. So when we go out of this door, uh, our service begins. So go forth into the world as the living body of Jesus Christ through your service and your um, kind words and actions. So make changes in our world. Amazing grace of God and sacrificial Jesus Christ and the living power of the Holy Spirit be with you. God's people say, Amen. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Sing in glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me, Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me, Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. Jesus lifted me. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. Jesus. I, I was just waving because I'm going to sign up. Free, off. I'm free, I'm free. Singing. Jesus lifted me, singing mm -hmm. glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lived We've got to head to Baltimore. Okay, I'm take so care of travels. Yes, yeah, okay. safe travels. Jesus lived in me. Sing in glory. Hallelujah. Selena, I'll text Jesus you later. Jesus lived me. Yeah, amen. Have a blessed day, everyone. Right. Okay, you, you too. too. Take care. Yeah.